Hello everyone. My name is Astrid Magnus and I am a PhD candidate at the Copernicus Institute of Sustainable Development at Utrecht University in the Netherlands. Since 2017, I've been working with the FEAST project on a series of futures workshops to develop a Kyoto Food Policy Council. And later we've been collaborating on the evaluation of those workshops. Today I would like to talk to you about this path from imagination to transformation. Transformations to sustainable urban food systems are urgently needed as a key ingredient of more sustainable societies. According to the FAO, the divide between urban and rural areas is widening and cities are growing. And this challenge is becoming larger and more complicated. The task of feeding a growing urban population poses serious challenges in terms of equity, health and ecology. At the same time, the imagination of alternative food futures is also complicated by the looming effects of climate change, resource depletion and environmental pollution. New perspectives and strategies towards the future are needed to tackle these issues effectively. Methods of anticipatory governance are becoming increasingly used to develop networks for agenda setting and policy formulation. As tools of anticipatory governance, foresight methods can bring different actor coalitions together and help them develop and strategize for a range of different futures. While tools like scenarios, visioning, backcasting, and even more cre creative interventions like simulation games and art installations are becoming more popular, the evaluation of their effects is still underdeveloped. Especially for more experimental and critical futures, Evaluation of their multiple effects is complex. Currently, evaluation is focused mostly on immediate responses of participants after a workshop or session. This undervalues foresight processes as a one-time event with, with one clear outcome, rather than as long-term processes that are integrated in governance practices. The evaluations that exist focus largely on policy or business settings, and foresight processes used by activists or bottom-up groups are largely absent. Me and my co-authors have developed a framework that assesses the factors that shape the success of a future intervention. Every scenario workshop, game or visioning session takes place in a context shaped by the institutional landscape, the participatory culture and project in which it is organized. Subsequently, these factors shape the outcome of this future practice, which we have defined as the serious and inclusive consideration of alternatives in a pluralistic manner. But how can we measure the success of this outcome? Especially with a new and experimental practice like a game or an art experience. Moreover, how can we evaluate if the future practice has reverberated beyond its own project and perhaps into the participatory culture and institutional context? Currently, a few authors are trying to develop methods to trace the outcomes of futures practices. Firstly, Anique Hewink and her colleagues distinguish between the conceptualization of new futures and their initiation, any way in which they are realized in policy and society. Furthermore, Martin Heyer and Peter Pelzer have tracked the effects of a multimedia intervention through discourse analysis in which they record all new plans expressed in media, budget, and official documents after their intervention. Finally, the FEAST project has been developing a social practice theory approach based on work by Elizabeth Schove and her colleagues. They track food systems change by looking at shifts in competences, materials, and meanings. In the case of the Kyoto Food Policy Council, we invited Kyoto food system practitioners to a series of workshops. These participants were all involved in a sustainable food practice, such as a farmer's market or a school lunch initiative, which we called a seed after the Seeds of Good Anthropocene project. We hypothesized that bringing these existing practices or seeds together could outline more sustainable food futures for Kyoto. Moreover, they were a potential Food Policy Council member, members of a non-governmental group that would actively push for food system change. In 2017, we held three types of workshops. Visioning, in which participants outlined their ideal food futures. Backcasting, where they developed strategies towards these futures working back to the present. And gaming, in which the players took part in a Food Policy Council simulation. In part two of the research, which started in 2018 and has been going on until now, we have tracked the effects of these workshops through interviews and discourse or document analysis. 
the futures workshops yielded a lot of interesting results in terms of learning about the Kyoto food system, networking opportunities for the participants, and it turned out that the simulation game was very effective in mobilizing participants for the Food Policy Council. We also found that this complementary approach made the workshop more effective. We published these results in a paper that came out last year. In part two of the research, I interviewed participants and organizers of the Futures Workshops about the outcomes. We divided the interview questions into three groups. The first one focused on the starting conditions, uh, the opportunity for change, institutional support, and the ambition for change. We found that especially the ambition was large, but the institutional support, for example, was not present yet. The second group of questions focused on the process of conceptualization of new futures, analyzing the participants and the role of researchers. We found that the FEAST project as organizer and presence in the Kyoto area was a strong advocate of the futures we developed in the workshops. The final group of questions considered the initiation of change. Here we found that some leading change makers in the Kyoto area had been instrumental in advancing the Kyoto Food Policy Council and that the methodology and the SEEDS niche practitioners learning about each other's activities was very motivating and mobilizing for the group. Subsequently, we analyzed documents from the current Kyoto Food Policy Council, which became increasingly embedded in the institutional context. And we studied documents from other backcasting and gaming sessions that were spin-offs from the first series of workshops that we did. Analyzing the interview and documentation results, we found a number of significant outcomes and lessons. Firstly, we found that the FPC as a governance mode was key in this process. It provided the framework for both the futures workshops and afterwards. After the workshops, people were already enthusiastic and motivated to join the FPC, and it remained the framework that organized the group. What we can learn from this is that when a bottom-up group wants to organize itself and strategize using futures tools, deciding on a governance mode can make a crucial difference. Secondly, we found that the seeds were effective. People were learning about each other's activities and were motivated to collaborate and support each other. A lesson we can draw from this is that involving existing good practices in an exploration of the future strengthens your process. Thirdly, we found that the methodology is important. A combination of methodologies can make for better plans, and attractive methods can lead to these methods being repeated and adopted in other contexts. Finally, we found that ownership of the process after the future's intervention was crucial. The project champions were key in this case. The second lesson we can draw from this is that the community building, which FEAST had done before the workshops, was very beneficial. It can be very effective to first build a strong bottom-up community who really enjoys the process and spending time working on a better food system before taking this process to higher levels of governance or institutionalize it. So all in all, this was quite a rich set of findings, but thinking back to the futures framework at the beginning of this talk, can we say that the outcomes are a serious, inclusive consideration of food system alternatives? Firstly, the Food Policy Council as a collection of niche practices worked both in the short and long term. People change their behaviors and routines after workshops, which in the long term may lead to a change in materials, competences and meanings, or in short, in practices. Secondly, and perhaps more surprisingly, the future practices proliferated. We saw tools of anticipatory governance spread through participants in our workshops. This change in engagement with the future can increase the momentum, in this case for food system change, and enables scaling to other cities, organizations, and levels of governance. Finally, the Kyoto Food Policy Council has developed itself into an institutionalized group at the prefectural level. This is the kind of systems transformation that could lead to further sustainability transformations in the Kyoto food system. So looking back to the framework to assess future practices, it's interesting to see that firstly, there was a direct effect on the Food Policy Council project plans and on the participants in the workshops. However, we could also train, trace a reverberation into the culture around participatory futures. And finally, even in the institutional context, it is important to note that the further away you are from the futures practice, the less directly the effects can be attributed to this intervention. The installation of the Food Policy Council is a testament to the working group advocating for this new governance mode, rather than an effect of one single set of workshops. 
This illustrates how futures practices should be embedded in a larger governance process and lose a lot of their value when they are treated as one-off events. So what lessons can we draw for the evaluation of futures practices involving bottom-up groups and experimental or critical methodologies? Firstly, it is important to look out for the proliferation of key concepts and practices. Secondly, new connections between people and organizations are important. Thirdly, the realization of new governance arrangements is important, as well as the proliferation of participatory future methods. And finally, involving existing niche practices can bring in a direct effect on participant behavior with regards to the food system around them. To conclude, I have listed some generalizable insights from the Kyoto Food Policy Council case. I believe that researchers and practitioners aiming for food system transformations using futures practices can learn from these insights. Firstly, it's important to consider the local context and utilize its strengths. A strong embedding in this local context is important, as are the local connections that you have. Rather than developing a one-off workshop, for maximum effect, it's important to invest in a long-running process by allocating enough time, resources, and manpower. In this long process, trust and enthusiasm is key. A governance mode to frame the efforts can increase the effects as well, as can existing inspirational practices. Finally, methodologies such as a Food Policy Council simulation game can help in scaling a bottom-up movement. These insights kind of feed into these final remarks. I think we can conclude that the outcomes of processes such as Kyoto FPC are shaped by its process, results, key concepts, key actors, and methodology. As such, it should be considered as an organic experimental process characterized by iteration, replication, and structuration. There are opportunities for scaling in accessibility and replicability of the process. And finally, the project champions or key actors in a bottom-up group are the knowledge brokers. They are the ones that can connect the niche practices or seeds with the institutional context and embed them there, for example, in a food policy council. That was all for my presentation today. Thank you very much for your attention and I look forward to answering your questions.